I'm sitting here with all my friends. That's right. They were great. Oh, my goodness, they were good. I can't wait to watch that show. Well, earlier this week, our buddy Aaron Meyer from the popular blog, Lemons Lavender and Laundry, joined us to show off her latest $100 room makeover. Uh, now, Aaron also took time to answer some of your DIY questions on our Facebook page. Take a look. Okay, question number one from Sandy. I need to paint my small living room. I want a color to make it appear larger. Do I need to prime it if my paint says no primer needed? Okay, so when you want a small space to appear larger, you need light color paint. And that can vary depending on what you like. If you like cool, go with a light gray. If you like warmer, go with a kind of a light beige okay. color. As far as primer, unless it's a really dark wall, I don't find primer super necessary. It Ooh. tends to maybe take one coat of paint off, but you end up just doing the coat of primer. But primer is cheaper, so if it's I buy a gallon of primer or a gallon of paint, just buy the primer just and do that as your base. Lisa writes, tile and grout cleaning tips. Would love an environmentally safe solution. Okay. So for this tile? is your for you. This, this is, is my, this is I've your got forte. It. I've yeah. got the grout. The tile I tend I have like a um, it's a really concentrated cleaner and I dilute it and that's what I use on my tile. So that's not really that exciting, but the grout, um, all you do is grab some baking soda. Okay. You can put it into a bowl. I would say around a third of a cup. This is not something you're gonna store. So it's make it, use it. Then you're gonna add in some hydrogen peroxide until it kind of forms a paste. You don't want it watery, runny, but you also want it to stick to a toothbrush. You're gonna dip the toothbrush in there and then scrub your grout. It will seriously take Gross, nasty, dirty grout, and make it white. Trust her. This is her. This is her lane, girl. Yes. Okay, Natalie. What up, Natalie? How to keep a laundry room fresh? It sometimes has a fishy odor. I clean it monthly and leave the washer door open. Okay, so leaving the washer door open is great because front-loading washing machines tend to produce some funky smells because they're airtight and then you have moisture in there. Oh. So she's doing the right thing with that. There's two things I can think of. Either A, she's not, like you do need to clean your washing machine. She's doing it really often, which makes me wonder if it's actually the filter. Okay, I've cleaned this filter. It's the nastiest smell. And I'm wondering if that's maybe her problem. It tends to be like in my washer, it's on the lower part. You li literally like wear a mask because it's going to smell horrible when you take it out, but it has gunk and like detergent and stuff, lint in there. Take that filter out, soak it in some vinegar, yeah. and then um, kind of clean that out. And a whole bunch of water will also come out, and that will also smell horrid. So get rid of that. Sounds like a good job for your kid to do. Okay, anyway, Lisa, hi Lisa. Is there a spray to make or buy that keeps bedding fresh between washes? You can make it. You yeah. can totally make it. So linen this spray. This is her tea. This is her cup of tea too. Linen spray tends to be kind of expensive, yeah. but you can make it for probably a few cents. So you've got to go and get some vodka. Okay. It's um you can come to my house. Yes. You, I'll borrow you some. Yeah, I'll loan you some. <laughs> you can use rich hazel, but I find it still has a scent that it isn't so great. So I use vodka. And then you add some drops of essential oil. Lots of people like lavender for the bedroom. It's a relaxing scent. And so you can spray that down on the linens. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't finish the recipe. Fill the rest of your container then with distilled water. And you can spray yeah, that down. Yeah, not just vodka. Yeah, just vodka and essential oils and go. No. Um, the other thing she might want to think about is when she does wash her sheets, um, your mattress, Take some baking soda, add some essential oils into it, mix it up, and sprinkle it on the mattress. While your sheets are washing, let it sit there. The baking soda will absorb any odors. Essential oil will leave behind a nice scent. And then you can just vacuum it up before you put your sheets back on. We have a quick one. Uh, okay. Another Lisa. How do you clean grease and dirt on wood kitchen cabinets, especially around knobs and handles? Okay, so this is a common question because when you bake, you get the little splatters, yeah. and then they attract dust because they get sticky. And soap and water doesn't typically remove it. So I have never had cabinets right above my oven. I've done um, like the hood to your range or a microwave. And I've always used just straight lemon essential oil on a cotton ball. That might be a little harsh depending on the finish of her wood. So another thing you could try, I have a wood polish recipe on my blog that is olive oil and vinegar. And that may actually help because the oil is what's gonna actually help remove the oil, which I know sounds weird, but that could potentially work for that situation. Perfect, there you go. There you go. Aaron's so great. Aaron's so good. For more of Aaron's cleaning and DIY tips, check out her blog at lemonslavenderandlaundry.com. We'll be back right after this.